Welcome to today's session where I will be discussing duty and bonded warehouses in SAP Business One. My name is Caroline Parkinson and I am a consultant at Sapphire Systems. So I'm just going to discuss some of the duty and bonded warehouse common requirements and we find that requirements commonly occur for duty and bonded warehouses when a business produces a good subject to excise duty, so for example wine, whiskey and beer. A business can hold goods in a bonded warehouse where duty is suspended until those goods cross a duty point. Examples of goods crossing the duty point and leaving a bonded warehouse could be delivering the goods to a customer or writing goods off after becoming spoiled. Businesses often pass on the duty value to their customers and often require the cost of goods sold to include the duty value too. Businesses need to easily report movements in and out of bonded warehouses and also duty payable figures to HMRC. Businesses, for example breweries, may sell in different units of measure, for example cases, kilderkins, barrels, litres and hectolitres. And HMRC workings require all units of measure to be converted into hectolitre as a percentage of the ABV and that is hectolitres crossing the duty point multiplied by the ABV value. SAP Business One works with multiple units of measure to allow us to convert cases of beer into hectolitres and hectolitre percentages. The examples used in this presentation today are based on a brewery producing more than 60,000 hectolitres of beer per year. The examples can also be found on the UK government website link shown below. The first example we're going to look at will be producing and selling 375 cases of beer with a strength of 2.8% ABV, which is considered a low strength beer. The second example I'm going to show you will be producing and selling 148 kilderkins of beer with a strength of 4.2% ABV, which is considered standard strength beer. The third example I'm going to show you will be producing and selling 450 cases of beer with a strength of 8% ABV, which is considered a high strength beer. So firstly, I'm just going to come into SAP Business One and I'm just going to show you the sales order. So here's the sales order and the first item is the pale ale with an ABV of 2.8%. And we can see that I'm selling out 375 cases and each of those cases consists of 24 bottles at 275 ml. The second line we can see is cask amber ale with an ABV of 4.2% and I'm selling out 148 kilterkins. The third line is stout with an ABV of 8% and we can see I'm selling and producing 450 cases each consisting 24 bottles at 275 ml a case. So I'm just going to minimise the sales order and come back into the presentation and we can have a look at the first example. So the first example we'll be looking at lower strength beer duty and we know that there's a reduced rate of beer duty that applies for beers exceeding 1.2% but not exceeding 2.8% ABV. The lower strength beer duty rate is £8.62. So in this example, just to recap, we're going to be selling 378 cases of beer, each containing 24 bottles at 275 ml with an ABV of 2.8%. We firstly have to convert that into total litres per case. So we take the 24 bottles and multiply that out by 275 ml, which gives us a total of 6.6 .6 litres per case. We know that 6.6 .6 times 375, because I'm selling 375 cases, equals a total of 2,475 litres. I need to now convert those 2,475 litres into hectolitres to find out how many hectolitres will be crossing the duty point. So to do that, I take the 2,475 divide it by 100, that gives me 24.75 hectolitres that will be crossing the duty point. The 24.75 hectolitres, I need to multiply that out by 2.8 because my um, pale ale is 2.8% ABV 
and that gives me a figure of 69.3 hectolitres as a percentage that will be applicable for duty to be paid to HMRC. And the total duty to be payable to the HMRC will be 69.3 multiplied by our duty rate of £8.62 which gives us a value of £597.36 that we're going to pay to HMRC. But as we discussed earlier, sometimes what we find is that businesses prefer to also pass on this duty rate to their customer and include it in the cost of goods sold so the profit figures also reflect um, the duty value. So I'm just going to come back into SAP Business One and I'm just going to open up my packaging worksheet to show you the cost of goods sold um, and how that is applied to, to an item cost. And we can see here that I have a production order for um, 375 cases of pale ale. So there's my pale ale 2.8% uh, and there's my um, cases each consisting 24, point, uh, 24 bottles by 275 mil. And if I click on that, we can see that it's already been issued and it's already been received. So let's just take a look at this production order. I'm just going to drill into it. And we can see this is the production order for the pale ale. So I can see in order to make 375 cases, of 24 bottles at 275 ml each, I needed these items here. So I needed the bright beer and I needed um, a total of 24.75 hectolitres. I needed these six pack carriers, cartons, labels um, and the bottles. But also what we can also see is that I have a duty figure on here as well. And I can see that I've got a figure of 69.3. So if we just have a look at where it took that 69.3 from, well, these are my um, hectolitres that are going to be produced. So I'm going to take 24.75 hectolitres of bright beer, and I'm going to multiply that by my 2.8% ABV. So multiply by 2.8% ABV that gives me a value of 69.3 and this 69.3 here is what we're going to multiply by the £8.62p duty rate. Now what SAP does is it stores that duty rate on the item code. So if I open up the item code and come to the stock data you can see this is where the item cost, so the cost of the duty, is £8.62 and if I actually close that and have a look at the summary, we can see the summary of our costs for this particular production order. So I can see to make the 375 cases of pale ale of 2.8%, I can see the actual item component cost was £3,880. If I open this up, I can see the bright beer that was required, the label body, the label neck, the carton and also the bottles. Okay, And I can see all the quantities required and that were used in order to make these 375 cases of pale ale. So I can also see here I have an additional cost and it's this additional cost here that is the value of the duty. So we have two costs. We have the component costs and then we also have the cost of duty and this is how our actual product cost of these 375 cases of pale ale at 2.8% ABV is calculated. It takes the cost of the components and also the cost of the duty and it includes those together to make the actual product cost and this is how in SAP Business One the cost of our beer can include an uplift of the duty value. So I'm just going to close that production order out, close that down, and I'm just going to come back into the presentation so we can have a look at the next example. So the second example we're going to use um, is a standard beer duty rate for beers exceeding 2.8% but not exceeding 7.5% ABV. The standard beer duty rate is £18.74p. 
and in this example we're going to sell 148 kilderkins so that is um, each kilderkin is 18 gallons and the beer the amber ale is going to have an ABV of 4.2 percent the conversion factor that we know one gallon is 4.546 liters we've got 18 of these oh, of these kilderkins so I know that 4.5 um, or 6 litres multiplied by my 18 um, gallons is 81.82 um, litres per keg or kilderkin. I'm selling out 148 of these um, kilderkins so therefore my total litres will be 81.828 um, multiplied by my 148 that I'm producing and selling to give me uh, just over 12,110 litres in total. I take those 12,110 litres and divide it by 100 litres to find just over 121.10 hectolitres will be crossing the duty point. 121.10 multiplied by my ABV of 4.2 gives me 508.62 hectolitres as a percentage that will be applicable for duty. So therefore my total duty payable will be 508. Um, 8.62 multiplied by my standard duty rate at 18.74 which gives me a total of £9,531.53p that will be payable to HMRC. But how is that applied to our cost of goods sold? Well, if I come out of here and come back into um, SAP Business One, we can see that I have a production order here for my amber ale, 4.2%, I can see that they're kilderkins. And if I just click on this here, what we're going to do, we can see it has not been issued or received yet, and that's what I'm going to do. Now I know some of you um, may use iPads to do your receipting in. Um, I'm just going to do it manually today. And I'm going to confirm that I have received and um, produced the 148 kilderkins. And I'm just going to process that. So if we now have a look at our production for our 148 kilderkins, we can see that it, um, the components have been issued and the 148 kilderkins have been receipted into SAP Business One. So I'm going to, just going to look at this production order. And we can see in order to make these 148 kilderkins with an alcohol volume um, with an ABV of 4.2%, I needed these... Um, these components and also I've applied um, an uplift of the duty and again exactly the same working we take our planned hectolitres and we multiply that by our ABV so let's just have a look at that again so my planned hectolitres will be a total of 121.10 and I'm multiplying that by my 4.2 percent ABV so I know that in total 508.64 will be applicable for duty and if I have a look at my duty rate if I just open up this item code and come to the stock data tab we can see that this duty has a cost of £18.74p if I just close this out and come to the summary tab we can see that the cost of components was just over £12,252 but we also have this actual additional cost of £9,531 that gives me my actual product cost of just over £21,784. So if we remember the actual additional cost, the cost of my duty, okay, so that's the value that I'm uplifting the stock by, is £9,531. And if I come back into my presentation, we can see that that is exactly what I was expecting. Okay, so that is how our cost of goods has been uplifted by that value. So let's just close this production order down before we come back into the um, presentation. And we'll now have a look at a third example that takes into account high strength beer duty. And we know that high strength beer duty 
is applied for beers exceeding 7.5% ABV. And we know that we calculate the value to be paid to HMRC is the standard beer duty rate at £18.74p and also a high strength beer duty at £5.29p. So for example, we're going to sell 450 cases of beer each containing 24 by, by 275 ml bottles at 8% ABV. The 24 bottles are multiplied by 275 ml to find that per case we have a total of 6.6 .6 litres of beer. 6.6 .6 multiplied by the 450 cases that we're going to produce and sell gives us a total of 2,970 litres in total. To find the hectolitres that are going to cross the duty point when we sell them, we take the 2,970 and divide it by 100. So we know in total 29.7 hectolitres will be crossing the duty point. We then incorporate our ABV. So we take the 29.7 multiplied by the 8, because 8% ABV. Which equals 236.6 hectolitres as a percentage that is applicable for duty. We then take the 237.6 the hectolitres, multiply that by the duty rate of £18.74 to give us a value of £4,452.62p. But we then apply a higher strength beer duty and to do that we take the 237 0.6 hectolitres as a percentage, multiply that by the higher, by the higher um, strength beer duty rate of £5.29p, which equals £1,256.90. So we now know that the total duty payable will be the two figures combined, and that is £4,452.62p plus £1,256.60 and 90 pence, which gives us a total of £5,709.52 payable to the HMRC. But as we um, have discussed, we may also want to uplift our stock value by that figure. So we'll come back into SAP Business One and we'll have a look at our next production order, this one here. And we can see that this is the stout at 8% and we are producing 450 cases which eat, which includes 24 bottles at 275 ml. So again I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to receive those into stock and again I know that um, a lot of you will be using iPads perhaps to be doing this but I am just going to do it manually just for now. So I'm just going to receipt off the components and also receive on those 450 cases of stout with an ABV of 8%. So we can now see that's been issued and received. If I come into the production order, we can see that to make the 450 cases of stout, I needed a total of 29.7 uh, hectolitres of bright beer I also needed the six pack carrier, the cartons, the labels and the bottles. But we can also see here I have two further lines. I have the standard rate of duty and also the higher rate of duty. And again it's exactly the same. So I take the 29.7 hectolitres required of bright beer and I multiply that by the 8% on both of those lines. In the example before I showed you the standard um, duty. At, now let's just have a look at the higher rate of duty and we can see on the stock data tab this high rate of duty is at £5.29. 5 £5.29. And again if I come into the summary tab and if I open this up I can see that the components so that is the um, bottles if we just have a look in there so the bright beer, the labels, the bottles, etc. Each came to just over uh, £1,995. But we can also see that the additional cost came to £5,709. 
So that additional cost plus the component cost gives us a total product cost of £7,704. So that actual additional cost, the £5,709, that's exactly what we saw in the presentation. So if I go back into the presentation, we can see that there is that value right there that will be payable to HMRC. But if I just come back into SAP Business One, we can see that what we've done is we've actually uplifted the product cost by that particular value. So I'm just going to close this down. And I'm just going to close down um, the packaging worksheet. And I'm just going to come into our sales order that we looked at earlier. And I'm now just going to deliver these out. So I'm firstly just going to um, assign uh, my batches. So I'm just going to auto select the requirement. So it's going to update that batch. And I'm also just going to um, allocate my batches of stout. And I need 29.7 hectolitres or um, sorry, um, of those cases. And I'm just going to update that, say that's OK. So I've now um, allocated that to the sales order. And what I'm now going to do is deliver this to my customer, to Fox Dis Dis Distributing. And I'm just going to do that um, just manually. And I'm just going to copy it to the delivery note. And it's at this point that the goods will now come out of the bonded warehouse and will go um, and will be subject for duty. But we already know that our um, cost of goods sold, so our values include our um, our duty value. So we've uplifted that and um, and uh, passed that on to the customer. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Add. So I've clicked Add, and we can now see we've got the delivery note to to the customer and we now need to uh, to find out um, how much we need to pay um, to HMRC. So I'm just going to close this and I'm just going to run one of my um, HMRC reports. I'm just going to close this particular sales order. So I'm just going to come up to my um, my reports section and I'm going to come into my HMRC reports. And I'm just going to run my daily beer return at the standard rate. You can see I've got daily beer return for the low and the high as well. So I'm just going to run this report and I'm just going to put in a, a date range and just for today's um, presentation I'm just going to run it for today just to um, just keep it um, nice and simple. So I'm going to run my beer duty return at the standard rate and we can see if we just open this up in um, make it quite large we can see this was the customer we can see the delivery date, we can see the item, we can see this is the cask amber ale at 4.2% and we can see that I um, delivered 148 of those Kildekins. I can see a total of 121, just over 121.10 hectolitres across the duty point with an ABV of 4.2% giving me a total of 508.66 which I multiply um, by 18.74 to give which is the duty rate so I know there we are again that is um, hectolitres crossing duty point is 50866 um, and, and therefore the total duty to be paid is 900 uh, sorry 9532 pounds 20 so now I know um, my figures if I just come back into the presentation we'll just come down to the um, next slide we can see that what I can do is I can use these figures for forms like the W1 form or the EX46 beer duty return so for example here we've got this section the general beer duty at the standard rate I've got the bulk he hectolitres, the hectolitre percentage, the duty rate and the amount of duty. And if I just come back into SAP Business One, we know that I've got the, um, 
the total hectoliters crossing the duty um, the duty point. I've got my duty rate, and I've then got the total duty to be paid. And this is how SAP Business One can um, make working your um, with bonded warehouses and duty rates very easy. On top of that, what I also have, of course, um, if I just come into um, back into that sales order that we just had a look at, I also have the ability, if I want to, to actually view um, movements in and out of bonded warehouses. So, for example, if I wanted to have a look at the movements of um, pale ale, oops, let's just um, open it up. Okay, I'm just going to open this up. I can right click. I can come down to the stock audit report and if I just um, open it up I can see this is my bonded warehouse A1 so that's where it moves into and out of and I can see all the movements so I can see where it came in on each of the um, production orders and I can see where it went out so in fact if I just scroll down here you can see that today on the 5th of March I have this movement with 375 cases coming in and I can click on that and I can very easily drill down into the receipt for production. So I'm just going to close that out and you can see that the next line was a delivery note. This is the delivery note that we just created. So if I open that up, what we can see is where the, where, where the items moved out of that particular bonded warehouse and crossed the duty point. At this time, I'd just like to thank you for listening and just invite any questions. Um, you can also email me if you wish. My address is caroline.parkinson at sapphiresystems.com.